For many, the gateway to the Upper Valley is a major exit off of Route 89, one last Granite State spasm of go-go commerce before crossing the Connecticut River into a quieter Vermont. Mention Lebanon, New Hampshire, and many people would think of this, the generic strip of fast food joints, big box stores, and chain hotels right off Interstate 89. But technically, this is West Lebanon. Lebanon itself, only two exits and a world away. The village of Lebanon is a place of fountains and funky food trucks, a pretty town green, splashes of art, and tons of color. Take Brian Barthelmus, for example, by any measure, a local standout. I'm six foot seven-ish and covered in tattoos. You recognize this thing? Barthelmus agrees to show us some hot spots around Lebanon. His sidekicks, two-year-olds, Poppy and Emerson, are none too sure about these camera-toting strangers. His New England stink eye is like... <laughs> two Americanos were here. First stop, Lucky's Coffee, housed in a former Gulf gas station. Yeah, they built this whole thing up themselves. It was a hot mechanics mess in here before, and now it's amazing. What was it about the garage that lured you? For me, it was just the cool factor. I came around the green one day when we were looking at spots to do the coffee shop, and I said to my husband, wouldn't that make an amazing coffee shop? It was a working garage. We had no idea it was even for sale. Owner Deb Schindlinger and her husband have transformed this old service station into a successful bakery cafe. But conversation might be as crucial as coffee here. I've had a lot of our customers come in and say, you know, where were all of these people before Lucky's was here, you know? So people are meeting other people here, which is really the best compliment I could possibly have. Ready for some sandwiches? Much as we'd love to linger, the aroma of hickory smoke has pulled us down the street to the little store. So the little store is little. The little store is little, yeah. <laughs> Bud and Scott Marsh took over this historic neighborhood market. Been here for almost 100 years. And lit a fire under it. We have a wood fire barbecue, which we take those meats, turn them into awesome sandwiches. The seductive powers of smoke yeah. make Brian yeah. Barthelmus go weak. You hey. think you're going to get a tuna wrap, and then you end up with a rack of ribs. <laughs> and the twins' favorite sandwich here? Uh, French fries. <laughs> <laughs> Barthelmus has made his mark here as a tattoo artist. People start to know each other based on me tattooing them. His work, a colorful connective tissue between the inked up underground in the valley, like the two guys who recently recognized Brian's work on each other's arms. And one of the guys is like, oh, you're crying earth man, you know? And he's like, oh, you're like weird mechanical head guy. Barthelmus got his first tattoos as a football player, a standout offensive lineman at the University of Virginia. He was signed by the New England Patriots in 2006. But by then, he says, his head was elsewhere. So, like, I, I wasn't invested, really. Almost all his spare time was spent on art and music. Coach Belichick noticed. And I don't remember exactly what he said now, but it was something like, you don't want to be here, like, you should figure out where you want to be. And I'm like, you know, I'm a tough guy, I tattooed, play football, and immediately my eyes start welling up. I'm like, oh God, that's a lot of truth, you know? Head is heavy. So Barthelmus did the next logical thing. He hit the road as lead singer of an indie rock band, Tallahassee. I miss buddies. I like buddies, you know? A rock and roll band is just a traveling locker room, right? So, you know. It's a multifaceted existence that Arthelmus likes to think keeps him guessing. I went to a good college. I was a football player, I was a musician, I'm an artist. I just keep enjoying challenging people to like think broader about all humans. The band, like Emerson and Poppy, is currently taking a break. But Barthelmus is quite content to play on here in the Upper Valley. I think that's kind of the thing about this whole area, and it's taken me years to really figure that out, is like, there is magic all over. Hmm. Uh, what an interesting guy, mm -hmm. and Brian told us that the Patriots moved him from guard to center during training camp, even though he had no idea how to play center. Right, and making matters even worse, <laughs> across the line of scrimmage is Vince Wilfork, mm. behind Vince is Teddy mm. Bruschi, <laughs> and they're both out to kill him, right, so he knows, <laughs> yeah, maybe my days here in New England are numbered, and they sure enough turned out to be, in part because of Coach Belichick's vision of what his life was going to do for him. You know what?
it, but he's doing it okay. It worked out perfectly. All right, still ahead. Hikers appreciate his open door and open heart. The hot showers aren't bad either. <laughs>